version mappings, and the versions table is versions and their file to hash mappings. Um, currently, we're doing MD5. We want to do some, some sort of deeper, cooler stuff with this, but we've gotten good results uh, with, with straight up cryptographic hashing so far. Um, so the rest of this stuff is future work. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get to that. Everyone good so far? Chewing up massive amounts of source input files and producing these two hashes tables, or these two uh, data tables. How many files are we talking about? Um, got currently 166 versions of WordPress, um, uh, 32 versions of PHPBB. We're supporting a lot of different versions of these files, uh, of, of each of these web applications, um, and many files within there. Um, got support for a couple of plugins. We're just, I'm just doing two right now to, to show that the technology worked. We'll add more later. But you can, you can sort of see that, that explosion of different artifacts to deal with when we get down to plugins, you know, 1,200 versions of WordPress plugins that we can uniquely identify. So fingerprinting. Um, what we don't want to do is look at all these possible files that could exist on a remote system and fetch them all. That would take forever and hundreds of megabytes and is unreasonable to do. What we want to do is surface a couple of files, um, you know, 10 or 15 files that give us lots and lots of information about what's there. So we want to pick files that are present in many versions, because we request it, and if we get a 404, that, that hasn't helped us. It's helped us a little bit. We know um, files that, uh, we know it can't be any of the apps that actually contain that. Um, but uh, we want to find files that exist in many versions and also have changed from version to version to version. So you can sort of think logically, things like um, change log or, um, what else do we have in here? Um, uh, uh, change log, um, install or update, or any of those sort of user documentation that, that discuss new functionality. Those will definitely change, um, and that's you know no trick to find those. Finding ones that are really obscure is the trick, and that's uh, one of the nice things about having this again fully data-driven, no human judgment process going on. So uh, here's some of the candidate files, like for example, for movable type, um, mt.js, uh, client.js. Um, these are all, again, these static files. We're not looking at any PHP files. We're not looking at any JSP files. Those kinds of interactive files, we don't care about those. Those are all um, blacklisted out when we start chewing through the, the source code to produce the data tables. So here are the, the 15 that if you go to, to um, find a movable type machine um, or a movable type app, these are the one that it'll get. Uh, MediaWiki, obviously a documentation, change log, um, the, the heuristics to, to pick files automatically uh, surface those, and then some slightly less obvious ones, um, lang, uh, sync lang, I don't know that I would have gone looking for that one early on as a, um, as a very useful file um, to fetch, but it popped up there. Um, some of that stuff. So again, just hammering on that all the data is in the code, none of the data is in the operator or the person compiling the tables. So fingerprinting. We've got these cool data tables, and we know what files we want to request in the remote machine, so we go ahead and request them. As each of those uh, goes out, some of them will get 403s or 404s based on little individual um, strange configurations or stuff that people have done. That's okay, we're fetching a bunch of files. We only care that we get data back on a decent number of them. So here, um, it didn't come out as large as I was hoping, but uh, got versions, you know, the one file gave us version 201, 202, maybe 304RC, something else said 251. We've got these, these sets of possibilities. Remember the elephant? We intersect them. And what we have with uh, that small area is we have files which there is definite concrete evidence for the existence of that version, but no evidence against it. Okay. So if, uh, for example, if we'd done that and got in this, um, this inner circle here, or this, this sort of inner area was too large, whoops, how's that? This inner area was too large. If it's not useful enough for our purposes, whatever our purposes are, we can turn around and winnow. Remember the versions table that will allow us to confirm or refute the existence of a particular version? So we're going to go ahead and pick some slightly different files 
based on what's in the version table. You look up the version that, that you want to confirm or refute, get out a whole list of files that, that will give you information on that version, and fetch it, and send a, a smaller set of requests, and ultimately you're, we're able to narrow it down a bit. Um, winnowing is turned off by default, but if you turn it on, um, it, can, it tends to reduce your, your uh, version set by a, about half which is pretty nice since, since uh, the results are reasonably small to begin with. So if, you're, if uh, you need more accurate data and you're willing to make a few more requests, winnowing is a way to do that, all using the same data that we collected up front. This data also allows us to do application guessing. Um, using the versions table, we say, hey, surface for me files that exist in every single version th that's out there. If not every single version, then 99% of versions, and we'll pick up that other one with, with an additional file. So we get a very small set of files that darn well should exist in, say, every version of, of Moodle. I think that's Moodle up there. Um, is it? Whatever. And um, so things like the, uh, the application logo. It's been there since the beginning of time. It hasn't changed. They like it, and it's staying right there in you know, slash images logo. All right, um, so if we're doing app discovery, send those files at it, one of them should come back with a recognized hash, and bing, it's some version of Joomla, we can turn around and then go ahead and do full-on fingerprinting against, now that we know it's Joomla, we can use the Joomla tables to fingerprint. Okay, supporting a new application is pretty simple. As I said, gather every version you can, dump them in a directory, chew through them, get out two tables on the end, and then turn around and say, whatever my new app is, fingerprint using those tables. All right, so uh, this tool is only interesting if it works. Turns out it works pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and fingerprint my boss's website here. Um, we know it's a, uh, happen to know it's a movable type, so I'm going to plug that in, um, load up those movable type data files and start fetching uh, each of these, each of these uh, indicator files that we care about. So you see mt.js implies this set of versions, client.js implies this set of versions, and those are pretty large sets of versions, larger than I would like to see, but again, the only thing we care about, so we're going through large sets of versions, large sets of versions, is this inner area. As long as that's small, any of the individual files can, can post back um, many, many versions, but we can narrow it down. So if we finish this fingerprint, uh, we get out to fingerprinting resulted in any of the, the 4.2s or the 4.3, either the, the regular version or the commercial version. Um, turns out this is 4.23 commercial, so we're doing all right. Um, this has a vulnerability in it, by the way. Sorry. Um, it does plugins too. Again, same logic, same approach going, going for this. Um, we can say, hey, go to some example site and please guess, and we know it's Drupal, please guess what plugins it has. Chug, around, chug along for a few seconds and come back and say, here are all the, the supported plugins. They could also be running other plugins, but they just aren't ones that we support, but this is, this is what we're able to discover. And then turn around and say, we care about what version the IMCE plugin is. Okay, cool. We'll fingerprint that and came out with its uh, Drupal, um, 6.x version 1.3 of the plugin. So there you go. Um, tool kind of does its job. Anybody run any of these well-known web apps? Any of um, uh, Joomla or Drupal or WordPress, PHP BB, any kind of stuff? You want to you be a guinea pig in the white? Oh, it's Windows. We can't do that. All right. All right. Uh, what do you got? Somebody? Gotcha. Artrenewal.org. And should I guess what you're running? Or do you want to tell me? 
It's not even a question, all right. Okay, so what this is doing is uh, going through all of those data files that I told you about for every supported web application and finding out what, uh, what files are likely to give us good information on what he's running there. So it's going to try and send maybe two to three, two to four requests um, f for each supported app to see if maybe it's running there. So I, I told you I, I would hopefully not send you for a cup of coffee on the actual fingerprinting. Guessing does take a little bit longer, so I, I've made a liar out of myself. Unlikely, actually. Um, I, I had to explain that to our legal counsel a while ago um, when we got a cease and desist. Um, but no, this is actually behaving very, very much like a web browser in, in terms of the, the kind of traffic that it's sending, the volume, the speed, the types of requests. All the requests are very well formed. So, uh, yeah, this is just uh, URL lib, HTTP lib. Um, I, I was banging my head against some of the, the stuff that Python allows there. Ooh. The demo gods do not smile on me. Do you want to tell me what version it is? Or do you want to tell me what app it is? Uh, is, that, is that where your blog is? Or is it at, like slash blog? No, it's blog. Uh, that could make a difference. Let's try it out that way. And let me load this up just to, just to make sure I'm, I'm actually hitting something live. Artrenewal.org. Uh, I would have expected an error if it was, um, uh, I if we couldn't get there at all. OK, here. So very cool looking blog here. A little free advertisement there. A little nudity. I like movies. All right. Man, I hope this works. Ay, uh, yay, yay. All right, I, I will figure out. Are, and are you hosting? Are you hosting this yourself? All right. I'm making a fool out of myself. All right, to, to recover a little bit of face here, I'll go ahead and, and uh, finger, do a, a live fingerprint of that one I showed you uh, just a moment. What's that? Um, shouldn't? Well, if, uh, is there a redirect there? Hang on. I don't want to burn too much time on this. I should have known better than to tempt the demo gods. That's all right. So this is, this is the one that you just saw uh, on the slides, but uh, it's a little bit slow over here. I think I'm running over VPN, actually. So here's the, each of those version sets coming up. And th this could be multi-threaded. Right now it isn't. We could make all these requests in parallel. So there, there's a, a lot of speed to be gained. But it does the job right now. OK. So there, there it is. It is running live. Let me go ahead and get through what we have. And then if we get closer to the end, I'll, uh, I'll take a couple of more shots. There we go. OK. Um, so OK, we, we've got this toy. We, we assume that it works. Uh, Evidence to the contrary, uh, notwithstanding. Um, did a whole bunch of targeted scans um, based on Shodan to say, all right, go get a whole bunch of things that we're pretty darn sure are WordPress, hit them, get versions, try and shake out some bugs. A bunch of scans on that. Um, John helped me out a lot. Is he here? I told you I owe you a beer. All right, I still owe him the beer, but he's not here. OK. Uh, then uh, got a dump of 87 million .com domains and said, OK, let's go and do app guessing and then fingerprinting on all of those. So discover if there is a supported app there, and then go ahead and 
fingerprint it and see what version's there, and take the results from that and see what interesting stuff cropped up.